everyone in case you have noticed yes I am wearing the same outfit and it is the same day and I'm making numerous videos because there is so much going on I'm getting distracted right to left I have to tell you we are in a place of pest pressure just now um, I had to go in and intercept birds eating all of my blueberries inside of what we thought was a protected area but I found that they've ripped holes in the net so I can't forget I have to come back out and mend that but there's other pest pressure that I'm battling one of those pests is flea beetles. How do we know we have flea beetles? They are the tiniest little black bug that will appear. You may not know what it is, but if you're trying to grow eggplant and your leaves have become completely laced and you can't see the culprit, I'm going to give you some ideas right now of what it most likely is and how you could potentially try to treat it. This is one of our eggplants here. This is the Casper eggplant. You can see that's an absolutely beautiful, perfect and pristine specimen. And right now these leaves look pretty good, but as you can see, there are some holes and you can see, especially on this one, that there's all these little tiny pinholes. Well, this is the culprit. Um, the, uh, this is the result of the culprit, which is the flea beetle. Now we spent years allowing our eggplants to, you know, just get totally decimated. And surprisingly, even though the leaves can get to a place where they're totally laced, and I have one over here, this only took a few days for, for this to happen. You see all this lacing? This leaf will become a complete skeleton if left untreated. So one of the things that we decided to do was discover a um, all natural remedy to treat flea beetles. Now, even though these plants here, this is the Rosita eggplant, you can tell because it has the pink vein and the Casper is the white eggplant and it has a white vein. And these are the only two varieties we're growing this year. Last year was very frustrating. We were left with skeletal leaves and we had stalks, but at the end of the year, the one eggplant that did continue to produce was this beautiful Rosita. It gave us big, beautiful fruit. It is disease resistant, but we decided that we were gonna get on this problem and try to address it. So this is the product that we invest in. I'm trying to, my camera keeps overheating you guys. It's like 90 degrees here right now, early in the morning. So Captain Jack's dead bug. Now this is called spinosad and you can see that I'm gonna show you the active ingredient. And you may want to, you know, just do your research on what spinosad is. There's a lot of information and we encourage everyone, you can see what it, it goes after. It kills bags, worm borers, beetles, caterpillars, gypsy moths, loopers, leaf miners, spider mites, tank caterpillars, throw up some more. Now, we don't like to spray anything anywhere. This particular bottle here is ready to spray. You don't have to mix it. We just carry it around. Now, this is the product I was telling you we spray on our corn ears before the worm starts to form. So we started spraying this on our eggplants. And you can see, while these plants are not perfect, they are doing substantially better um, than they were in the past. So what you have to do is spray this early in the day so it can dry. You never want to spray this type of stuff or any wet substance on any leaf in your garden. I mean, if it rains, that's one thing. There's nothing we can do. But you really want this to dry. Now, I've been spending my time out here sh trying to shoo the bees and the pollinators away because I'm worried. You know, I don't want to spray anything. I don't want my bugs to get affected by this but you know we're growing this to eat so we're, we're trying to stay as organic as possible and you can see this is for organic garden gardening uh it says it in several places so farmer john bought this at either lowe's or home depot and i'm going to ask him to attach a link here while he's editing so you can read the instructions and basically what you do you carry it around with you in the morning um the morning that you're spraying this gets sprayed on the eggplants once a week and again, you know, this is a measure that we're taking because eggplants are just, they are just victim to the flea beetle. So it's really a very simple process. You just shake it up, give it a good shake. You want to spray the top of the leaf and the bottom of the leaf. If there are any, you know, pollinators present, I try to not spray it at them. Um, and I try to stand here until it dries so I can continue shooing them off. 
but it's important that you spray the top of your leaf and the bottom of your leaf when the bugs are present. Well, this is it though, you guys. This is the dog days of summer now. We're approaching the middle of July. You know, when things go wrong, this is the time. I must have killed 50 squash bugs today because I'm in an area where we, we grow our eggplant. We also grow all of our zucchini. We have corn and green beans going back here. So there's a lot to be lost and this is very, very tender uh, greens that grow. So I am really battling bugs. Um, we don't like to give advice where we say, here's what you need to do to kill bugs. Here's five best remedies to, you know, take care of this bug. I I'm not into shock and all. I'm not into sensationalism, you guys. We don't have all of the answers. All we can do is tell you what we're doing and how it works for us in our suburban garden here in uh, Northwestern Burlington County, New Jersey on our half acre lot. We are everyday gardeners. We are not the experts. We don't have the answers, but we do know that this product works. Do I recommend it? I do. Um, use it gingerly, use it responsibly, and understand how it works before you go spraying it. Please don't spray it indiscriminately. Please be aware that your pollinators are present. So hopefully if you're battling flea beetles and you're battling worms in your corn and many other things, as you can see, this, this product does cover um, a lot of different pests. So you may want to give it a try and see if it helps you, particularly with your eggplants and dealing with the lacing of your leaves. So anyway, you guys, thanks for stopping in and I'll see you in the next video. I have a cute little pocket harvest here. Some cocosil, zucchini, some Chadwick cherry, some sweet 100 volunteer tomatoes, a tiny little park swapper and a handful of French filet green beans. I am so grateful.